Good evening. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your love, your mercy, your grace, and all that you have extended to us this day. We pray especially right now, God, that you forever keep us in your love, forever keep us in your arms of protection, God. Now I ask you a special blessing tonight, God, that you will bless these that are graduating tonight. Bless every home that is represented in here tonight, God. Cause everything that they put forth their hands to do in righteousness to prosper like never before, God. Cause all of the things that have been gleamed into them through these years of education and especially at Lighthouse Christian School, God, that they will go forth and proclaim the gospel into the, all the world tonight, God. We thank you right now and we give you glory, honor, and praise for this occasion. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Yuri. I'm the founder and president of Lighthouse Christian School, and I welcome you to the graduation ceremonies of our 2024 class. Welcome tonight. One thing I do want to say, first of all, is if you are a parent or a grandparent of one of the graduates, would you please stand right now? Thank you. I want to say a specific thank you to each of you. That's the reason I asked you to stand, because you have entrusted one of the greatest assets that God has brought to you to be with us, some for a year, some for many years. But we thank each one of you for entrusting us, and we're looking forward to great and mighty things that they will do in the future. We also, if you are staff, if you're part of the Lighthouse Christian School family, would you please stand? Thank you. The reason I ask everyone to stand is because my name is the one that's out there as a founder and president. And I have people many times tell me how much I've done and great things I've accomplished. And I tell them, I said, I haven't done anything. I said, the people at Lighthouse, my family at Lighthouse, they are the ones that do everything. I'm simply a Christian businessman who God gave a vision to. And I was smart enough to know I can't do everything. There's very little I actually do as far as running the school, but I know how to staff my weaknesses. And we have been blessed with an amazing group of people that make me look a lot better than I really am, but as long as you don't know it, that's good. We'll keep it that way. Uh, one thing I wanna say for you as parents having to do with taking pictures is that we're gonna have the graduates come forward and we are different than many of the large schools. We are different because we're not a large school. I always tell a story. Uh, years ago, we went to a, a graduation of one of my daughter's friends. It was down at what I still call the Jacksonville Coliseum. That's how old I am. I remember it by the old name. We went in there, and at the beginning, they let us know. They had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of graduates, and that you are not allowed to shout, to clap, applaud, say anything whatsoever during the ceremony. And they pointed out, they said, we have policemen all around this auditorium. If you clap, if you scream, if you yell, we will arrest you and take you to jail immediately. And I thought, how terrible is that? Well, we ain't doing that tonight. <laughs> you can clap. So what I wanna let you know is when your graduate comes forward, we'll have them standing there. We've told them already, you're going to stand here probably longer than you want to because mama and daddy and grandmama and aunt and uncle and whoever, we invite you. It is okay. Come down, take pictures. You know, we have about 50, 48 graduates, so we don't want to spend five minutes on each one else. This will be a very long graduation, but we do encourage you. It's okay. When you hear your child's name, it's okay to scream. It's okay to get excited. Yeah, I'm one of those charismatic Christians that believes it's okay to get excited in church, and we are in a church, so we get excited for the Lord, and we also get excited for these people sitting right here because this is an exciting night for them. Also, this is the time to take pictures because once we go walking out, once the seniors process out, they'll be outside of the building. They won't be back inside. In case you're wondering why, they've told me, we're hungry. Hey, we ain't eat supper yet. 
So as soon as we get through, we're all going to be heading out to the closest restaurant we can find because we're going to hear grumbles in their stomach if we don't get them out here before too long. Uh, just the other thing, I did mention this is God's house. I, I just always want to say a special thank you to Evangel Temple Assembly of God. They are so wonderful. They're gracious. They treat us like we are somebody special. So thank you, Evangel Temple. My next thing on my list is I get to introduce our speaker. I am honored to be able to introduce this guy. Uh, Eastman Curtis is his name, and I've known Eastman for decades, but I haven't really known him until fairly recently. He's one of those names I knew. We met you know, years back when I was probably one of the who knows how many thousands of people that he's met over the years. And we've, we've re-met recently and rekindled a friendship. This guy, he started Eastman Curtis Ministries years ago, and it was very interesting to me uh, as I was sharing with some of our staff, I had one of them literally start crying. She says, oh my goodness, I've known him forever. I used to work for him years ago. Another one, she said, what? Eastman Curtis is a speaker? We went to all his conferences in the past. So this is special for, for me to have somebody that so many people knew and have already been blessed just because I said your name. In addition to Eastman Curtis Ministry, he serves on staff at Redeemer Church out in Ponte Vedra. He's a children's pastor and the seniors pastors, and I think you have the same mentality whether you're dealing with a six-year-old or 66-year-old. But anyway, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Eastman Curtis up here. Thank you. You guys, this is so exciting. It's graduation. I don't know about you, but I'm fired up about this. Does anybody remember when they graduated? Yeah, we got to go back a little bit. I know I do. But uh, what an exciting time. God's going to do some amazing things tonight. I, uh, David told me, and David, I love you. Thank you so much, man. It's just so exciting to be here, to watch all these people and see how hungry they are for the things of God and launch you guys out into the future that God has in store for each one of you. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight for just a few minutes. I think I got 15 action-packed minutes. How many of you believe I can be done in 15 minutes? Okay, there's three of you out there that have great faith that you believe that. Okay, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it. I need somebody to agree with me of faith. But this evening, I want to share my favorite scripture. Some of you, this is probably your favorite scripture also. It's found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. And in verse 11, in the new inspired, the NIV, I call it the new inspired version. It's actually the new international version. But in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, listen to what it says. God's talking. He says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Somebody say, God's got big plans for me. <laughs> Graduating seniors, would you tap one another and just say, hey, God's got big plans for you. Tell them that. Would you do it? It's no lie. God has big plans. And he shares with us these plans that he has for us, which is really amazing. Plans to prosper you. Somebody say prosper. The cool thing is God wants us to succeed. He said, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. God's on your side. He's for you. He's not against you. Plans to give you hope. How many of you are grateful for hope? You know, I found this out. You can live three days without water. You can live 40 days without food, but you can't live five minutes without hope. You've got to have hope. And God is the God of hope. He gives us a hope, and he also has a future in store for each one of us. And the one thing that I found out is when we really begin to discover and scratch around, what, it, what is God calling me to do? I mean, whatever it is, I'll do it with all my might. If he wants me to be a plumber, I'll be the best plumber I could possibly be. If he wants me to be a pastor, I'll be the best pastor I could be, an electrician or an evangelist. What does God want me to do with my life? Well, I'm so glad you asked because the Bible shares some things that helps us scratch around and discover what the plan and the purpose that God's given for, to each one of us. One of my favorite scriptures also, other than the book of Jeremiah, 29 verse 11. It's found in the book of Psalms. It's Psalms 37 verse 4, and I love this scripture. It says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That's what I love about God. God loves you so much, and I believe this is twofold. Not only does God love you so much that he wants to give you nice things, give you the desires of your heart, he loves doing that because he loves you. He really does. You're the apple of his eye. I mean, that's the whole reason Jesus came. The Father loves you. Jesus loves you. Holy Spirit loves you. 
And he wants to embrace each one of us and to fill us with all that he has in store for each one of us. But in this, he loves us so much. He wants to give us good things. But not only that, listen to what it says. When I delight in the Lord, check this out. God gives me, literally places his desires in my heart. How many of you, when you received Jesus as your Lord, you knelt down and you said, God, here's my life, just take it. When you did that, how many of you had some of your desires begin to change? Anybody have that happen besides me? Sure. See, I got kicked out of three schools for drugs and alcohol. I was what they call, this is the varsity loser sign. That's what I had. And I got kicked out of three schools, and I remember my dad had put me in a, a school where he said, okay, you're going to have to fly right, you straighten up. And it wasn't a Christian school. He didn't know this, but that's where all the parents sent their problem children. And so it was a big party at that school. So I go to this school, and I'm going there to straighten up. And I remember I started falling right back into the same rut that I was trying to get out of. And I heard about these radicals that called themselves born-again Christians, and I could never figure out, why are they so excited? I mean, they look like they're about to blow up. They're so happy. What, what's up with these born-again Christians? So I went to a little Presbyterian church to find out. And when I walked in, I saw a little grandmother that was just like lit up. She was like wired to 220. She was just, just I, you could just, she was on fire. And I looked at her and I thought, I don't know what that woman has, but I sure want what she has. The end of the service, I was walking out and I saw her and I was going to beeline right over to her to just talk to her for a minute. And she saw me and she took two steps back and she said, young man, you can be different with Jesus. When she said that, it was like all the pieces of the puzzle came together. One of the schools that I got kicked out of was a Lutheran school. I got confirmed in the Lutheran school, but you know, so they made you memorize scripture. And so the one scripture I had to memorize was John 3, 16. God loves you. Get out of school. So I started going to this school. And so I realized that God wasn't mad at me, but he loved me. He really does a plan for my life. And so that night in my dorm room, I just knelt down and said, God, I've made a mess of my life. I'm a straight F student. I, I need your help. And I said, here it is. Would you just take my life and do something with it? All of a sudden, all the guilt, all the condemnation, all the insecurity, all the torment, it just seemed to lift right off of me. And I realized that I was forgiven, that I was a new creation. I was made brand new. And I'm sitting there in my dorm room just so excited. The next morning, I walked into the principal's office and I said, sir, this is the head, actually we called him a headmaster because it was a boarding school. I said, sir, watch me, watch my grades watch my attitude, watch my life. You're going to see a difference in me because I'm what they call one of those born again Christians. I figured that's what I was, you know. And so I said that and I saw his jaw just drop down. I walked out of the office from that semester forward. I used to be a, a flunky, but from that semester forward, I was on the honor roll every semester. That year I got elected senior class president and I got the first scholarship ever offered to anyone at that college prep school for two reasons my leadership capabilities, and my exemplatory conduct. <laughs> my life was changed. My desires changed. Where before I used to want to love to party, but now all of a sudden, now I love to talk about Jesus. Now I love to see other people receive Christ as their safe. Something happened to me. I just became addicted with Jesus. So when you delight in the Lord, let me tell you what he does. He gives you the desires of your heart. For some reason, I thought that when I knelt down and I really made Jesus the Lord of my life, the Lord of my dreams, the Lord of everything, when I, when I really made him Lord, I had this misunderstanding that God was going to suck me up. He was going to put me out in the Amazon River somewhere down some little tribe where they didn't wear clothes, but they, you know, they ate fish eyes and rice and, you know, they, and I would be stuck out there and get consumed by mosquitoes, you know, the rest of my life. And, and that's, that's the way it was. I thought that's exactly what would happen. But let me tell you this. If God calls me to the Amazon River, the exciting thing is God puts his desire in your heart to go to the Amazon River. It's hard for us to do things even when we desire to do them. God knows that. But when he puts his desires in our heart, it makes it a whole lot easier. Delight yourself in the Lord. That's my, that's my job is to delight in the Lord. When I make God the delight of my life, he literally puts, changes, produces his desires on the inside of my heart. He does that. He loves us so much. There's a great scripture. It's found in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, For God who works in you will to will and to act 
in order to fulfill his good purpose. God puts his will, his will in your heart and he gives you the power to do it, to act on it. And once that happens, he, you just begin to step into new things, new realms. You have a desire in your heart to see things happen. You have a desire in your heart to see the world a better place, a different place. I want you to know this room is filled with a bunch of world changers right in here that we're about to launch out. Can I get an amen? <laughs> what a great night tonight. I'm so excited for you guys. You know, when you start doing things that God's called you to do, I, I am, like what David was saying, I'm the children's pastor at our church, and I'm also the seniors pastor at our church. I help out with the seniors, and we have such a blast. And a lot of the messages, I notice, they sort of are the same that I do with the kids that I do with the seniors also. You know, the, the music's a little bit different, but it's about the same. But we have such a blast in there. And so working with these guys, we started a little ukulele band. It's called the Eastie Boys. <laughs> My name's Eastman, so we figured, oh, let's call them the Eastie Boys. So we're the Eastie Boys, and we've been traveling around, and we've been doing stuff. We'll do stuff before church starts many times, and then also we've been traveling around doing nursing homes, and I I tell you, I have such an amazing time staying there playing a ukulele, and I'll look at these people. A lot of them, they'll, they'll wheel them in, and they're sort of in half coma. They're not very aware at all of what's going on, and all of a sudden, we'll start singing some old gospel songs, and you watch their hands. They start clapping. They start getting into it, and then we started doing this. As they really start getting into it, they just come alive. You get to watch them. We do dance competitions. We took Mardi Gras beads, and I prayed over them. We turned them into Jesus beads is what we did, and we'll get in there. I'll say, hey, okay, everybody, show me your Bibles, you know, and so they'll hold up a Bible, you know, and we'll give them, you know, the, the bees will put on their neck, and we'll have a dance competition in the nursing homes, and it's so cool, especially when they're in wheelchairs, when we do the dance competition, it really is a blast, just watching them, enjoying it, then we pass out the kazoos, and I'm telling you, the place comes unglued. But doing that is one of my favorite things, just watching God move on these seniors. Delight in the Lord. He gives you the desires of your heart. He's at work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure, giving you the ability to do those things that are on the inside of your heart. That's how God operates. And I'll watch those people, and I'll, I'll see God moving on them and them just lighting up and singing some hymns. But then I'll look over at the Eastie boys. You know, there's about eight or nine of us. And I look at them playing their ukuleles and just watching the joy of them being able to minister. Because when you delight in the Lord, God gives you the desires of your heart. Somebody say, I've got some God-given desires. Yes, you do. Amen. There's a great scripture. I want to close with this. Attitude is so important. As we're fulfilling and fulfilling the desires that God puts in our heart, just, just walking these things out, sometimes it doesn't happen instantly, but if you're faithful in what God's called you to do, don't grow weary in well-doing, for in due season, you're going to reap if you don't give up. So just don't give up, just keep doing. You've got desires, you got, you're heading in a direction, keep heading in that direction, keep doing what God's called you to do. Well, i gotta, I got to tell you this, attitude means a whole lot, because I've seen in the book of Isaiah... The Bible tells us, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Everybody say willing. Now say obedient. The church I was brought up in after I got saved, I remember the, the pastor was really great at stressing obedience. It's important. Stay obedient. And that's part of it. You need to be obedient. It's important to get up in the morning, do what God's called you to do, do go through it, do it, do it. But then I met lots of people that were obedient, but they weren't eating the good of the land. They weren't eating the best that God had for them. They're just sort of going through the motions of life. And God's got so much more for us than going through the motions of life. He wants us to embrace Embrace the life that he's given us, for it is a great life that he's given to each one of us, an abundant life that belongs to us. And so in looking at this and finding this out, man, I, I began to realize attitude is important. Obedience is your actions, but willingness is your attitude. Everybody say attitude. Attitude's important. You got to have... I've seen lots of people that have been obedient and they've not eaten the good of the land. Why? Because they're missing in a powerful, a powerful ingredient, and that is willingness. 
When you're willing, that is your attitude. I did something years ago. I remember when we first started in ministry, and Amy, it's so good to see you. Amy was one of our interns years and years and years and years ago. We had such a blast. We'd, you know, they'd go from church to church and tell people about Jesus and do skits, and they'd have a great time. But I remember when we were going through this and we were working, we're just, you know, different place all the time and doing different things and doing conferences and conventions and seeing lots of people get saved. But I noticed what began to happen. The get to began to change into a got to. And what God wants us really to do, if we're going to be efficient, if we're going to eat the best, if we're going to fulfill the plan and purpose that God has for us, our attitude is very important. It's important that we are willing, have a good attitude. You don't got to do it. You get to do it. And if you'll just take a little, just tweak that a little bit rather than, well, I guess I got to go to work today. I got to go to church today. I got to go to youth group today. Rather than have the got to, if you will change that to, I get to go to work today. I get to go to prayer meeting. Man, I get to do children's church. I get to do. When you have the get to, that changes everything. You know, this past week, I have the honor. My son is a musician, and he, he plays guitar, a great musician. And I play drums, a lot of percussion. I used to play at Disney World years ago when I was just 17. I actually just turned 18 years old, and they hired me full-time as a musician. I think I still hold the record for the youngest musician that they hired full-time. This is back in the uh, late 70s. So, you know, I was just so excited. So we're there, and, and, and I'm doing all this stuff, and, and, and you know, doing the motion. So I, I get to um, play with my son. So my son just did his first album. He's 33 years old. And I looked at my boy and he said, dad, I want you to play my album. I go, you want me, the old man to play in your album? I'm excited. I'd love to. So I got to jam with my son. And this last week he did his first music video and he goes, dad, we need you in the music video. So I'm like all excited. So I drove down to Lakeland. You know, we did the, the did the videos and we shot it and spent, you know, most of the night there. And I, I got home at two in the morning and I had to get up at five in the morning to uh, do children's church. And I remember my son looked at me, he goes, dad, you got to go to church tomorrow, I guess, huh? I go, no, I don't got to. I get to go to church tomorrow. And let me tell you, that attitude, rather than got to and move it into a get to, that energizes you because the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you ever wonder why the devil's after your joy, it's because he knows it's your strength. And if he can get your strength, he can get you. But if you decide and purpose that you're gonna hang on to the joy that Jesus has given you, it's joy unspeakable and it's full of glory. I'm not gonna look at the bad side of things. I'm gonna look at the good side of things because I know that God is able to make all things work together for the good of those that love him and those that are called according to his purpose. God can take a bad situation and he can turn it into something good. Can I get an amen? amen? And I really want to encourage our seniors. You guys, as you're launching out into the world, you don't got to launch into the world. You get to launch out into the world. You don't have to go to work. You get to go to work. If you have that attitude to fulfill the plan that God's given you, you're going to see some amazing things happen in your life. You guys, I, I want to pray for you. Would you do something radical with me? My time is up. I want you to take your hands, and would you stretch them toward our graduating seniors right now? And we want to do something radical. We want to pray a blessing over them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful for each one of these seniors that are graduating. We thank you that these that have turned the world upside down have come here to this place also. We release them to fulfill the plan, the vision, and the purpose that you've given each one of them the destiny that belongs to them. And we thank you, Father, that from this day forth, this world will never be the same again as they're launched out into what you've called them to do and what you've called them to be. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Somebody give God a shout of praise. This is exciting. David, thank you so much. Alexis Sierra Askew. Romans 10.5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. <laughs> Alexis Sierra Askew. 
Taylor Andrea Bass. Romans 10.4. Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Taylor Andrea Bass. Alina Lynn Bearden. 1 Corinthians 12.27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. Alina Lynn Bearden. Isaiah Nehemiah Bevel. Acts 2.28. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Isaiah Nehemiah Bevel. Jaden Adair Blackburn. Romans 8.30. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Jaden Adair Blackburn. Tyra Nicole Brown. John 7:18 He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself but he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth there is nothing false about him Tyra Nicole Brown Colin Blake Coltrane. <laughs> Romans 4.24. But also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. <laughs> Colin Blake Coltrane. Kristen Renee Cosper Burgess. Jude 1 24. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Kristen Renee Cosper Burgess. Josephine Marie Crosby. Philippians 1 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Josephine Marie Crosby. <laughs> Levi Cole Delp. <laughs> Psalm 910. Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Levi Cole Delp. <laughs> Liam Scott Dusanic. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4.18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but, but on what is unseen. 
For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Liam Scott Dusanik. Jewel Aaliyah Evans. Psalm 3-3. But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. Jewel Aaliyah Evans. Marcus Alexander Flores Lombardo. John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Marcus Alexander Flores Lombardo. Evelyn Flores. Deuteronomy 1119. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Evelyn Flores. Jordan Hans Gross. John 10.30. I and the Father are one. Jordan Hans Gross. Robbie Dayton Hamby. John 5, 24. I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Robbie Dayton Hamby. Ziana Dorothy Patrice Henry. Second Timothy 2.1. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Diana Dorothy Patrice Henry. Mindy Marie Howell. John 6, 29. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Mindy Marie Howell. Mackenzie Angel Hyde. Second Corinthians 6.18. I will be the father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Mackenzie Angel Hyde. (laughs) 
William Trayvon Johnson. Mark 12, 30. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. William Trayvon Johnson. Darren Jones, Jr. First John 421, and he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Darren Jones, Jr. Joshua Ray Allen Jones. <laughs> Ephesians 4.26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Joshua Ray Allen Jones. Maya Joyce Jones. Habakkuk 319. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. Maya Joyce Jones. Blake Andrew Khalil. Proverbs 11.2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Blake Andrew Khalil. Naif Pineda Kanaan. Ecclesiastes 719. Wisdom makes one wise man more powerful than 10 rulers in a city. Naif Pineda Kanaan. Jacob Braden Logsdon. 1 John 4.17. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have the confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. Jacob Braden Logsdon. Nathan Edward Martin. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Nathan Edward Martin. Jeremiah Santrell Mora. Romans 8.31. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Jeremiah Centrell Mora. Braden Lee Mullis. 
1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Braden Lee Mullis. Arthur Munez. <laughs> Revelation eleven seventeen. We give thanks to you, O Lord, the one who is and the one who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. Arthur Munez. Marquise Treshawn Murray. Romans 10.8. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. Marquise Treshawn Murray. Kasara Naomi Osborne. First Peter 2.2. 2. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Kasara Naomi Osborne. Joshua Gregory Palmieri. Romans 8, 2. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Joshua Gregory Palmieri. Herschel Devon Parks, Jr. James 1.25. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Herschel Devon Parks, Jr. Zachary Christopher Paris. Deuteronomy 1020. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oaths in his name. Zachary Christopher Paris. Asa David Patterson. John 321. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Asa David Patterson. Landon James Peacock. <laughs> Jeremiah 119. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, 
for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Landon James Peacock. Cameron Elijah Peterson. Second Corinthians 2 Corinthians 12.9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Cameron Elijah Peterson. Jeremiah Jordan Polite. Galatians 6 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Jeremiah Jordan Polite. Aaron Michael Posey. <laughs> Ephesians 6.16. Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Aaron Michael Posey. Dennis Alejandro Regalado Fuentes. <laughs> Proverbs 4.22. For they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Dennis Alejandro Regalado Fuentes. Stuart Andrew Smith. Acts 2.28. For you have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Stuart Andrew Smith. <laughs> William Quavez Starks. 1 Corinthians 131. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. William Quavez Starks. Joseph Philip Stingoni III. Micah 4.5. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods. We will walk in the name of, our, of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. Joseph Philip Stingoni III. Olivia Rochelle Trotman. <laughs> Acts 228. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Olivia Rochelle Trotman. Derek Zion Walters.
Galatians 3.29, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Derek Zion Walters. Najamal Nashawn Williams. Proverbs 8.22. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. Najamal Nashawn Williams. Aiden Alexander Weiser. Philippians 419. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Aiden Alexander Weiser. Would the graduating class of 2024 please stand? It is my honor and privilege to state that these students before you have satisfactorily completed all requirements of law and standards for high school as prescribed by the Florida State Board of Education and the administration of this school, and therefore are awarded their diplomas. <laughs> Students, you may turn your tassels. Join me in prayer. Father God, we come before your throne with boldness and with joy and with thanksgiving. Father, we thank you for this great evening that we've had. I thank you for each of the graduates tonight, for the families that have invested their time and their efforts and their money throughout the years. I speak a blessing over each one of you, that as you go forth, you'll see great and mighty things. As we have heard, you'll find the desires of your heart come straight from the throne of God. I speak that you will go out and you will conquer the things that you need to be conquering and that you'll have strength greater than you thought. You'll have love, you'll have joy, and you will be blessed and prosperous in only the way that God himself can do it. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I pray this. Amen. Amen. So now that you've graduated, mm -hmm. what's next for you? What are your plans? Um, I'm going to go to school for cosmetology. Awesome, very good. Where are you going to go? Um, I'm not sure yet. You know, there's plenty of options out there. Yeah, awesome. Congratulations. Thank you Congratulations. so much. You are your what are your plans? My plans are to stay full time in my job that I'm working right now and then go to college. Awesome. Where are you going to go? I did not know yet. Awesome. Congratulations. Where do you work right now? Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Nice. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Right now, really what I want to do after I graduate is to get some, something to eat. But um, really, I want to go to college. Um, I want to study in science and arts, get my PhD. Um, I want to go to FSCJ in the transfer after two years, and so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not, maybe bi I'm really interested in biology, um, you know, like animals, space, astro um, astronomy, and stuff like that. And so um, I'm really interested in like a lot of things, and so. Congratulations on graduating. Thank you. Now that you've graduated, what's next for you? My next plan is going to college. I'm going to go to college on June 24th, I'm going to UNOH, uh, learning all technician and high performance. Awesome, man. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. What are your plans? What's next for you? I'm going to go to college for four years at FSCJ. Awesome. Very good. What are you going to major in? Uh, technician work. I plan to go to the United States Marine Corps for EOD. Oh, awesome, man. Well, ahead of time, we appreciate your service and congratulations on your um, graduation. Thanks so much. Well, I plan on getting a job at Jimmy Jobs first. 
then I plan on going to FSCJ for two years to major in digital art, then full sail to, mass, to major in film, bring back the old samurai religion from Japan, and eventually move from Japan, move to Japan. I plan on joining ETA is Electrical Training Alliance and Mr. Jacksonville I'll become too. Plan on becoming an electrician, but who knows? God always has different plans for other people, but I'm just hanging in there. And I'm glad to graduate. It's a blessing. Well, what's next for me is that I'm going to live a relaxing and peaceful life. I'm going to do online college in September. I'm going to pick out some courses on online college and, and stuff like that. On on online college, you know, on my computers. After I do online college, I'm going to work with my parents in uh, a cleaning business. I'm going to work with my mom and my dad in the business. Okay, after graduation, I'm going to train my, I'm going to train my, ba my, my brain to be more responsible and hopefully, hopefully I'll, I'll get a job. Yeah, my brain, my brain needs, needs, to, needs to be sharp so that, so that I can focus on what I'm doing, pay attention, and and focus on God. I would like to um, open back my Etsy shop. I closed it because, you know, graduation school, and I have a job on top of it a lot. But I really want to grow my art-based business. I want to grow my art career. Yeah. I want to make a lot of money. Awesome. Uh, I want to be a welder. I want to like go out on oil rigs and I want to weld on the oil rigs and stuff. Dude, that's awesome. That, that's amazing. Like, are you going to go to Tulsa Welding School? No. No? It's I don't know yet. I'm, I'm looking still. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I will be going to Jacksonville University to study electrical engineering. Awesome, man. That's amazing. James, a great school. Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. Well, congratulations. Hey, thank you.